Hey, what's up? Uh, this is my first ever video. I just wanted to show off four different photo books that I got uh, in 2023. So last year. Uh, nothing really connects them other than I bought them last year. Um, I'm just going to go through each one individually, starting with the smallest. That's this one. Let me zoom in a little. There's a there's an iPhone for scale. So this is a book called Das Flüstern der Dinge, which translates to The Whispering of Things. Um, it's by a photographer named Thomas Kremke. I believe he's German, but he might, he, I think he's German. If he's Austrian, I apologize, Thomas. Uh, so this is, this is quite a, excuse the zoom, this is quite a thick book. It is, I think, near or past 600 pages, multiple photos per page. Uh, it's it's really beautifully designed. It's it's a hardcover um, with this textured linen on the cover. And it has I don't know if there's a technical term for this other than that, but it has a it has a bookmark. Two bookmarks actually. I'm not sure why there's there's two, but there's two. Um, it, this version of the book is in German, but you can buy an English version as well. Let's just look at, let's just look at the first couple pictures. It starts with these really full page spreads. And then we get our title page. Uh, you can see the subtitle is Aus einem Fotografischen Tagebuch von Thomas Kremke. So, from the Photography Daily Book of Thomas Kremke. Uh, these are pictures from 2008 to 2016. This was published by a company uh, that goes by Edition Patrick Frey. I believe they're a Swiss publisher. It was published in 2017. So the book is mostly spreads like this and like this. Um, a couple pictures per spread, usually some text from one of Kremke's diary entries. It goes pretty chronologically. Say so this is from the 3rd of February. And we go to the 15th of February. So it doesn't include every day in here. He might not have written every day, but I I love this spread so much. They made the pictures quite small on the page and then they they placed them in symmetrical positions to each other. Uh, this translates to I look and the things look back. These are two really wonderful winter pictures. I'm taking lots of winter pictures now, so I, I think I've been thinking about this pair quite a bit. I'll admit I've never gone through this book slowly. I think at least one way you can flip through it is quite quickly, because there's so many pages. I adore this spread. This paper is is quite thin and quite warm. It's it's almost like newsprint. I wouldn't be surprised if it was, but it's probably not quite. So this paper is quite warm, and then this picture is a nice warm gray, like the paper. I just I love pictures of statues too. So tomorrow I have a birthday. Let me see if I can find a 
particular spread I liked. This photograph is so, so gorgeous. I love, I love all the eggs. It matches the, at the end paper quite well too. Trying to find, sometimes you will see uh, Thomas himself in a picture, you can see the kind of camera he's using. Cause he's doing things like taking pictures of his laptop as he's watching something. Any kind of picture like that. I wanted to find this particular spread, but I might not find it. There's like I can find spreads in other books quite easily, but this is quite a large one. I love this one. I always love pictures of of winter or late winter skies with contrails. And then I always love pictures of of modern technology. Maybe that's not totally modern anymore, but it's quite wonderful. So the, the book continues for 600 pages of this. Um, I'll confess my German is quite poor. It used to be better. So um, I can't read a lot of the diary entries. There's some, there's some black and white 35 millimeter pictures mixed in here too. I'm not sure what, what Thomas shoots other than this daily book, I'm not familiar with any any more of his work, but sometimes you have breaks like these where he goes back to the, the full page spreads. It gets very meta. There's pictures of pictures on in places. I do that too with my phone. I take pictures of pictures and pictures of painting and again Kremke pops up quite often. I do need to get better at my German and learn and go through this entire book quite slowly, but I think that's for another day. I might make another video. Look at that. There you go. Okay. Again, das Flüstern der Dinge. Okay, the second book, which is <laughs> quite a bit shorter, a little bit bigger, uh, is Mirror City by photographer Harry Cully. Harry is a photographer uh, living in New Zealand, in Wellington, New Zealand, specifically. Um, this this book is is pictures from Wellington, supposedly Mirror City. Is either a nickname Harry gave the city, or or a, nick, a nickname Wellington has. They're all black and white photos taken, I believe, with a large format camera. They might not all be that that type, but they all look like that type. Um, it's a mix of details Harry finds, and then portraits of mostly young New Zealanders. Let me zoom in a little. The printing on this book is just gorgeous. Um, and the paper, the paper is really nice too. There's quite a few pictures um, taken at night of of buildings and, and and shops and there's quite a few pictures of graffiti of and pictures are usually taken outside on the street I'm not quite sure what eagles mean to most New Zealanders but 
This looks like quite an American picture to me. And there's there's some chapter breaks with this this thinner black paper and some other details that we'll, I'll show you. Um, whatever lens he is using to make these pictures has just the the smoothest roll off ever, and the printing really enhances that I think because they used quite a smooth paper. So so the the grays in this book just roll so smoothly. I really like this picture. I love, I, I r usually really love pictures of two or more people. I really wish this didn't go over the gutter though. That's, I think, only done a couple times in this book and I didn't think it needed to be done here. But Personal preference. I probably won't do this in a book, but some people really like it. There's the cover image of a pentagram and a cross. Um, I, I vaguely remember Harry talking about this book. This book has quite a large number of young people in it, and, and he took influence from, from Gothic gothic visuals. That's why you see things like graffiti and pentagrams. I love both of these pictures. I think this is probably hard to see, but there's a, a spider web there, and then this one is of a laundromat, and it's hard to tell, but I think that, that window is painted on. You can see the, uh, the cord running straight through the middle of it. I, I really love this picture. Like I said with uh, Kremke, pictures of paintings just do something for me. I'm not sure what it is about them. Again, graffiti, and then another chapter break. This time we're given what I assume is Harry's iPhone notes. Notes he wrote in his notes app that read almost like poetry. So. Some of them are just lists, so I want to I wanna say this is a list of maybe potential subjects for this project or a different project, future pictures, newsprint, newspapers, shop front near Basin, TV, motel, weed near Basin, tree hut, tree stump, goth house, Adelaide, laundromat, which I can only assume is this laundromat. <coughs> Person with cat carrier. I don't know if this means he wants to take a picture of a person with a cat carrier, or if he took a picture of a person with a cat carrier and he wanted to remember something about it. I don't know. And then there's there's a word here I I don't know. It'll focus. I don't know if it will. Venal venal venla vaccine venla vaccine. There's a couple of those chapter breaks in the book. Another night shot. This portrait in particular is just, I think, my favorite in the book. And usually when when I, there's a really strong portrait, I don't like having anything on this other side. But, you know, if we cover that up, this loses something, her hair loses something. This is almost graffiti, but again, goth things, this probably isn't, this is very 2008 to me, but, but there's pictures of, of a smartphone here. There's some kind of smartphone glass on there, I think. Let me see if there's any other pictures that I really wanted to show. There's another spider web. More phone notes. A 
Photograph Twins, Call, Call Samo, Vaccine, Return Sleep Machine, Mercury and Retrograde, Buy, Oil for the Door, Flat Pasta, the camera won't focus, there we go, Soap, Kitty Litter, Tissues, Medication, 110 millimeter Lens, Let me see. I love this one of shoes. Again, I wish it didn't go over the gutter, but hearts recur quite often if you go back and look at some of the pictures. And this was published this was published in New Zealand by by Bad News Books, which I think Harry runs. But really nice book. Really great one. Okay, book book three is Gluckauf by Bertian van Manen. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, this was published by F.W. Books last year. This is uh, this is pictures Bertian. Bertian took quite a long time ago. This is 1979 here. Um, and it's all focused around mining communities, families, families and communities and towns um, related to mining, I think around the world. The book is split up into several different sections each kind of has their own way of laying things out this first, first section is all portraits of people with a with a 35 mil camera They're, I love this one um, I'm not quite sure what to comment on them. They're all such, she's shooting so simply. Um, just, you know, eye level with them, putting them in the center of the frame. There's no, there's no fancy blur. Um, we're not asked really um, to imagine who these people are, we're, we're, they're meant to feel very real. See, th this kind of framing is very snapshotty, especially compared to that last book we looked at by Harry. Two very different ways of taking pictures of people. Some of them, some of them can be quite funny. I really love this first section. The second, so these, the sections are broken up by these uh, contact sheets. They're printed on this, this black paper and I hope with the light you can see that it's like reflect, this ink is a silver reflecty, reflecty silver thing. I'll get better at speaking, I promise. So we get to see some of her contact sheets. So this is this is um a picture we saw earlier, right? This one. See she took two frames of that. So this is how the sections are split up, and then every section of the book is quite different from the last one, and the layout differs. So this one, this last one was in, these are pictures in the UK, in Yorkshire. And this one is pictures of landscapes in the Czech Republic. And this one, this one's layout is quite unique because the pictures quite literally 
wrap around the ends of the book. You can see the divide between the pictures here and then this this long picture wraps wraps around that edge. See this one is almost all on the page except this little dome is cut off. This one's fully on the page. Really, really gorgeous printing. Again, see, we, we just get just the, the left side of this picture with this tree. It's almost, it's a picture in and of itself, but you, you, you flip the page over. Let me see if I can zoom in and that will show that a little. You can see the tree here and then you flip it and the tree is there again. Those are those landscapes. Another part of this section is in Appalachia in the 85. There's, there's captions usually all along the bottom here when they have people in the frame. So this one is Junior and Mavis, Cumberland, Kentucky. Swimming behind Libby's house, Van, West Virginia. Dorothy, Oceana, West Virginia. Betty and her twins. Still in West Virginia. The second section is divided by something different. Um, this is, as far as I can tell, a report on female workers in Appalachia. I'll admit I have not read this because it's quite long. The text is really small. Um, but I need to go back and read this. And then section three is in color. It's with this very, again, she's always working with quite low fidelity. Um, but this section is in color, and this one is again in Appalachia. I think in, in the same area, Cumberland, Kentucky. Really, really, really wonderful printing, wonderful colors. Let me show his face here. I don't want to show every picture in every book here, but I find myself flipping and thinking as I flip and then and thoughts come to me. I haven't really pre prepared what I'm going to say beforehand, but um, and again, we get another section break on this thinner matte paper with some kind of errata from Bertien's photography. So these are what I assume are work prints because they're quite beat up and torn. Um, you can't tell, they're, they're quite, the sequence quite literally like stacks the pictures on top of one another. So there's this picture and then that picture again. Like we've, we've put a picture on top. It does do that, they do that just keeps stacking up. Here you can really tell. You have we have these two piles, but then they get combined. You put this picture over them. Okay, 
and then more color. I've been looking at a lot of winter pictures lately. I think I said that earlier, but this one's just wonderful. There's also, mixed in with some of these color pictures, video stills from, I'm assuming a video Bertien took. If, if I had not read, I think, a synopsis of, of what tied all this work together, I, I think I would have found it quite difficult to link all of the pictures together with coal. Um, because it's mostly pictures of families. It's mostly pictures of family life and not, you know, pictures of mining. And it's not pictures, usually it's not pictures of the workers working. The, the amount of time, look at that one, the amount of time it probably took to gain the trust and access to this, these families is astounding. I really, really love this one. This man down here, his face is again in the gutter, but he's working on some some kind of puzzle. I really like the, the, both of them are wearing dark blue outfits. I just love that color. And um, I'm not sure I, I mentioned it, but this last section is taken in Russia. That's why they, they look so cold. Yeah, and that's the last section of the book. It ends again with contact sheets. There's quite a, a nice essay at the back that I did read. Um, yeah, very, very different way of presenting work than, than Harry. This is the, this is kind of the traditional American style of one picture or two pictures per spread. Um, but then this was done by FW, a, a Netherlands publisher that does just really great design work. And this is one of those instances where the design really, really elevates the pictures because every section is different and, and decisions to like, decisions like putting, wrapping a picture over the edge to make this already just destroyed landscape feel even more destroyed really really works so okay so the final book book number four is the north fork by trent davis bailey it comes in this like hard cardboard sleeve it's a it's like a linen soft cover but um this linen is like this attached dust jacket with this black paper on the other side. It's quite interesting. The whole book is quite minimal. There's nothing on the back. Um, quite large modern type. These pictures are all color. They're taken in a certain region of Colorado that, that Trent fell in love with during a certain period of his life. I think he spent quite a long time documenting this area and getting this group of pictures just right. Uh, the portraits in here are quite, quite spontaneous. None of them are very locked off and none of them are stale in that way. The double page spreads in this book are particularly good. They're not obvious. Both pictures always complement each other really well. The light Trent is shooting in is, is usually quite, quite gorgeous, usually golden hour. He's not really afraid at all of showing very, you know, classically beautiful pictures. Here's, here's one in a green yard. Green yard, greenhouse. Um, 
there's there's gardens and animals and cultivation. Um, he's very much working around themes of of community um, and what it means to to live in one place and to treat it well. It's hard to tell. That is, that's something shot, I think, through a screened porch, which is why you get those cubes. I think I'm moving a little too much, but this book is quite big and hard to, to film. I like this one in particular. And this one. Let me see how close I can get here. Just stunning, really, that one. I I have no idea what this is. I mean, there's leaves and there's a screen and then there's trees behind it, but I, I can't tell if he's looking up or down or side to side. He's usually shooting in autumn or in spring in times of, of change. You know, there's no real, like, locked off pictures of summer. See, this is spring, there's snow. Uh, I added this, this is not part of the book, mostly because YouTube, I think, doesn't like, sorry for the zoom, doesn't like quite empty. I think it relies maybe a little too much on the light to be good and then it falls flat. This spread I quite love. I'm not quite sure what's going on in this picture. It looks almost like math homework. This one's math homework. And then a horse. Again, the, the, when they put two pictures on one spread, they always work so well together. Gorgeous picture. Quite gorgeous. Looks, looks a little staged to me, but, but gorgeous. This one is my favorite in the book. I love these fake glass raindrops. I'm sure this video is quite long. Uh, there is an essay in the back of this book that's quite, quite nice. If you ever get a copy, there's the end. Uh, overall, some of the design decisions don't really work for me. This type doesn't really work for me. The pictures are quite gentle. Gentle and they're, they're taken quite spontaneously. And then we're given this really graphic, harsh font in this very, placed in this very graphic way. And I'm not quite sure it works with the pictures. Still, still a great book. All right, that's all four books. If, uh, if any of these books reminds you of a different book in particular, please comment that. If any of these books, if you noticed anything about these books that I didn't notice, please comment that as well. Um, and if you want to see more videos like this, please, please let me know. Because I think YouTube sorely misses long form content about photo books. I think people talk quite too quickly and don't go too in depth. So there we go. That's why I made this. Thank you.